What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's video. Real Amp versus Fake Amp. Kemper versus Tube Amp by Paul Davids. So what's going on, everybody? Today, we're going to be reacting to Real Amp versus Fake Amp, Kemper versus Tube Amp by Paul Davids. Again, please, if you have not already, please go and subscribe to Paul Davids, fantastic YouTuber and guitar player. Also, I put a link to the original video in the description. Please go and give that video a like. And also on this video, my video, leave a comment on what you'd like to see me react to next. So I know this video is a very, very, very old video, but I just love talking about this type of stuff on the channel. And I have not seen this one yet. It's got just under uh, a million views, I believe. Something like 800, yeah, 847 K views. So yeah. And again, I know it came out, what, uh, seven years ago, but it's still something that's very relevant and talked about a lot all throughout the guitar community and especially on my channel. So let's check it out. Real amp, fake amp. <laughs> Hi, this setup is quite interesting. What I've got here is a Kemper profiling amp and a Tone King Imperial. The Tone King is my main amp for gigging and the Kemper I use a lot when I play at home. It makes it fairly easy to play a cranked AC30 at midnight without getting complaints yep. from your neighbors. <laughs> this little device is capable of so-called profiling of an amp and that's what I'm gonna do. It will send signals into that amp and records what it gets back and sort of imitating the response from that amp. So it will behave the same when I put my guitar into that one. And if that process is done, I'm gonna make an A-B comparison between the two to see if you can hear the difference. And if so, which one you like better. So let's start. This is the manual. <laughs> It's not in there. <laughs> Kemper profiling guide. Ah, oh, here it is. Put this one on. Funny thing, it takes about the same amount of time to start up the Kemper as for the tube amp to get warm. I wouldn't know. I've never done any work with a Kemper at all. So the profile has been made on the camper, now it's time for some testing. Hold on. All right, I'm pausing so we can see everything on the screen. All righty. Understood. <laughs> It seemed to me, like when he was doing the message in a bottle riff, that the Kemper sounded a little bit brighter and the Tone King sounded a little darker. But other than that, the other few tonal comparisons, and again, I always say this when it comes to these type of shootout videos, 
I know they don't want to do a lot of anything in post-production, but the one thing that I hope they always did was even out the levels. Because sometimes a louder sound you just think is better. No, it's not necessarily better. It's just louder. And you'll gravitate towards it. Oh, I think that tone's better. Uh, but yeah, on the Message in a Bottle riff, the Kemper sounded brighter, and the Tone King sounded a little darker. That's just what I've noticed. No change there. No change. Anybody here noticed any difference in that last example of tonal shift at all? Let me know. And man, you got some ears if so. And again, everybody, if you're watching any video like this with tone shootout comparisons, if you're watching it on this phone with your built in speakers, it's not going to be able to tell you any difference at all. Get some good quality earbuds headphones, or listen to it on a proper sound system. a tonal shift there. There, it almost kind of sounded like the opposite to me is what I said the last time. The Tone King sounded, the Tone King sounded brighter, and this time the Kemper sounds a little bit darker in this example here. There's only been, this is only the second example that I've noticed a tonal shift, and it was a fairly noticeable, I'm not going to say hugely, earth-shatteringly magnanimous, but definitely a noticeable tonal shift.
Wow, this was a test I was really looking forward to. I didn't wow. AB the camper amp to another real amp before. And I think the sound of the camper came really close to that of the Tone King. Sure, there were some differences, especially in the high end. The Tone King had more sparkle and more high end. But I think I could tweak the patch on the camper amp like that that would become pretty indistinguishable. Or even better. Of course, those were all clean sounds, which is... Now, like I said, in all but two instances, and I've got, you know, my in-ear monitors that I use for performing. These are high quality in-ear monitors. Um, I only noticed the two differences that I pointed out were in one instance, I think it was the first instance, that the uh, Kemper sounded brighter and the, uh, the uh, Tone King sounded darker. And then the second one, I think, was vice versa. I can't remember exactly, but there's only two times that I really noticed anything that distinguishedly be different. Um, we talk about the proximity effect all the time, too. You know, it, it, the recorded sound is different than the in the room sound, so to speak. And it's the same idea as the proximity effect of a microphone uh, miking up a speaker cabinet. But if you move it a millimeter this way or that way, it'll make all the difference in tone. I think the same can be said for if you're in a room with an amp going and moving around. That's when people always say the in the room sound. It sounds different to you depending on where you are in proximity from the actual speaker. And then things are going to become indistinguishable when it's just a recorded, mic'd up tone. That's my thoughts anyways. It's a sound I seldomly use. Playing live, most of the time I put a booster in front of the amp to make it saturate just a little bit. For crunch and lead sounds, I use pedals. So why didn't I use the pedals for a test? Well, if I've got the choice to put a pedal in front of the clean camper amp, or just select an amp which is already overdriven, the choice is pretty straightforward. We all love a cranked amp, right? So I wouldn't use a high gain pedal with the camper amp. To come to the conclusion, I haven't used the camper amp in the live situation just yet, but that might just change. This was Paul Davids. Bye. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not worried. Don't worry, I'm not worried. It's okay. All right, everyone, if you are not subscribed to Paul Davids already, please go over and subscribe to him. Fantastic guitar YouTuber, absolutely a gem to the musical YouTube guitar community. And also, go and give the original video a like. I included a link to it in the description. And on this video, my video, please leave a comment on a video you'd like to see me react to next. Thanks for checking out this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like, comment, and share. It doesn't cost a thing and would really help out the channel. Also, please subscribe to my other channel, GK Mac Music, for some live looping live streams with a side of jackassery, some original music, and some short content also with a side of jackassery. If you'd like to help out the channel financially, you can buy some merch at the merch store or you can become a channel member. As always, everyone, thanks so much for your continued support. Do what makes you happy.